Hey there, Jen here, and this is a happy bit. Welcome back, and I want to let you know I love you. Happy Thursday. You rock. Today, we're going to be talking about four easy energy hacks that will truly boost your energy. How do I know? Well, I've tried all of them. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. A big part of happiness is your health. What we put into our bodies can truly make us feel happier and more vibrant. That's why I love our X bars. RX bars are whole food protein bars. And what does that really mean? It means they are made with real whole ingredients like egg whites, dates, and nuts with real flavors like unsweetened chocolate, coconut, and apples. And they're delicious. My favorite flavor is coconut chocolate, and they leave out all the fillers, the additives, the chemicals, and the added sugars that you'd find in most protein bars. And did you know RX bars has a kid's line? As a parent, I want to give my kids the same healthy nutrition that I eat myself, but I know it has to taste like something my kids will love. Well, these are just that. They're the same whole food ingredients as the RX bar for adults, just smaller and kid-friendly with flavors like chocolate chip, PB&J, peanut butter and chocolate, and so on. They're perfect for throwing into a lunchbox or a sports bag. And I feel really great knowing that my kids are putting something healthy into their bodies. RX Bar is offering the Vibrant Happy Women listeners an exclusive pack of six adult bars and four kid bars so your whole family can try these out. For 25% off your first order, visit rxbar.com forward slash happy women and enter promo code happy women at checkout. Order these and have fun trying all the flavors. Again, go to rxbar.com forward slash happy women and enter promo code happy women to get 25% off your first order. Most of us try to get our energy from eating too much sugar or caffeine or maybe taking a nap every day, although I love my daily nap. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> but there are four things I found that make all the difference. Most of us think our health begins with our food intake, right? We think we need fruits and vegetables and salad, but I feel like it's all a big pyramid. And at the base of that pyramid is actually four things. Let me list them. Sleep hydration, oxygenation, and your thinking. So how do we address these? Let me explain. When you wake up, did you get eight hours of sleep? If you have at least seven hours of sleep, you are probably less overweight. They have related and linked sleep to obesity over and over and over again. So simply by getting eight hours of sleep, you're way less likely to be overweight and way less likely to gain weight. So I have the rule to get into bed by 10. And I like to say, go to bed in the nines, which I borrowed from Lisa Cordiff from episode 123. And how do I handle this when my teenagers are out late? I actually just decided to go to bed anyway. The girls get put to bed. They're 11 and under. The 13 through 17 year old do their thing. And the only rule is they have to come and wake me up when they get home. So I know they arrived. Luckily, I sleep really well, I sleep light enough to wake up and hear them and I can go right back to sleep. And I attribute that to taking magnesium before bed every night, magnesium citrate. There are various forms of magnesium, some more digestible than others. I have just taken magnesium citrate for a long time, but you could research the best type of magnesium for you. I also try to keep my room really dark because light decreases melatonin and we want that melatonin to sleep. So when it's dark, your body says, oh, oh, it's dark. We got to sleep. Let's produce more melatonin. Finally, I think it's really important not to have your phone too close to bedtime. Why? Because it emits blue light and blue light is the light that's around when the sun rises and it tells your body, hey, it's time to wake up. Party time. So get the eight hours of sleep get into bed by 10, sleep dark, and take some magnesium before bed and see how that goes. Your energy will skyrocket just by that one little thing. The next thing, hydration. I like to have two liters of water before 10 a.m. It's not too hard for me. I'm a tall person. I can drink one liter right when I wake up and I can have the other liter gone easily by 10. And another tip is to carry water everywhere you go so you'll stay fully hydrated. How do you know if you're hydrated? Well, <laughs> I've heard there's a measuring stick and that's the color of your urine. When it's a dark brownish or a dark yellow, you're extremely dehydrated. When it's yellow at all, you're moderately dehydrated. And guess what? When you're fully hydrated in the optimal form of hydration for your health, your urine will be clear. Crazy, right? I've spent years walking around partially dehydrated. And I've noticed when I'm fully hydrated, 
I have way, way, way more energy. And what does that mean? I don't have to turn to food or caffeine or chocolate to wake me up. I can just keep going. So eight hours of sleep, get hydrated, and then oxygen. Now, this one is something we don't hear as much about, but our body has a certain level of oxygenation and it varies from person to person. How do we get the most oxygen into our blood? We have to practice diaphragmic breathing. How do we do this? Well, when you breathe, many of us raise our shoulders and the oxygen kind of stays more towards the top of our lungs. Well, those little villi or those little things that aeoli, I think they're called, that take in the oxygen, there are way more towards the bottom of our lungs. So we want to get the oxygen way down there. And to do that, we have to make room. So when you breathe with your diaphragm, you push your belly out, push your lower belly out and start breathing into your belly. And then you're getting more oxygen. Scientists can measure your oxygenation, but you can tell you've got it right because you'll notice your energy starts to perk up. So breathe deeply into your diaphragm. And the bonus is it activates the vagus nerve, which tells your body to metabolize cortisol. Get rid of that stress. So you're going to feel amazing. Another thing that oxygenates your body is exercise. Work up a sweat. Get that oxygen moving in and out of your body, breathing heavy. And that feels good, of course. You can take breath breaks. You know, a lot of people take smoke breaks. You can go outside and take a breath break and just remember to get that oxygen deep into your lungs. And finally, I was recently at a Tony Robbins event and he taught us about priming. And he actually wakes up every day and does what's called kind of like a breath of fire. You can Google it, but he breathes quick inhalations and quick exhalations in groups of three sets of 10. So it might sound like this. <laughs> this is going to be funny. It sounds like this through the nose, by the way, in and out of the nose. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop. That's kind of probably disturbing over a microphone, but you hear the speed of the breath. It's all going in and out of the nose, and it's a way to quickly oxygenate your whole body to start your day with energy. And then you don't need that cup of coffee or that immediate dose of chocolate to get yourself going. Finally, we have eight hours of sleep, hydration, oxygenation. I like to start my day with meditation. Meditation, first thing. I practice some gratitude and get my mind thinking about what I wanted to focus on. When you have this positive outlook that comes with gratitude, you feel more upbeat and your body has more energy because it believes great things are coming your way and it's going to support you. I like to envision what I want my life to be, what I want my marriage to be, what I want myself to be. I envision having energy. This is just part of my morning meditation routine. So those are four easy energy hacks anyone can do. You can do it all in about five or 10 minutes. Just wake up and make sure you had your eight hours of sleep. Hydrate right away. Oxygenate through deep diaphragmic breathing or the breath of fire or exercise. And then that meditation piece where you go to gratitude, you turn inward and you envision the life you want. I also have found that these tips really work for various times in my life when I want to turn to food, which would make me less healthy. When I'm hungry, I can breathe or drink or rest. Simple, right? When I'm sad, oh, I don't need that chocolate. I can breathe, drink or rest. Stressed, I can breathe, drink or rest or meditate. All of these four energy hacks can be used as your go-to. You can train your brain to go to these instead of turning to food or coffee or chocolate or sugar. So remember, sleep hydration, oxygenation, and meditation. And thank you so much for listening to this happy bit today. I will see you next week. Until then, get some sleep, drink water, breathe, and meditate with that attitude of gratitude. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast at www.jenriday.com.